If you ever been caught in the rain without an umbrella, your first instinct was probably to start running. After all, the less time you spend in the rain, the less water there is falling down on you. So you might think that running in the rain keeps you drier than walking in the rain over a given distance. However, by running in the rain, you run into the more raindrops than by walking thereby wetting more of your face, chest, and legs. Have your instincts been getting you wetter instead of keeping you drier? You now have a question that you can try to answer with a scientific approach. Which keeps you drier in the rain, walking or running? To answer this question, we are going to use scientific method. Scientific method is the process for experimentation that is used to explore observations and answer questions. The figure on the left outlines an example of a scientific method. Each step in the method shown involves specific skills. First step is making observations. Scientific investigations often begin with observations. An observation is information that you obtain through your senses. Repeatable observations are known as facts. For example, when you walk or run in the rain, you get wet. Standing in the rain leaves you much wetter than walking or running in the rain. You might combine these observations into a question. How does your speed affect how wet you get when you are caught in the rain? Next step is forming a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a proposed answer to a question. To answer the question raised by your observations about traveling in the rain, you might guess that the faster your speed, the drier you will stay in the rain. What can you do with your hypothesis? For a hypothesis to be useful, it must be testable. Next step is testing a hypothesis. Scientists perform experiments to test their hypothesis. In an experiment, any factor that can change is called a variable. Suppose you do an experiment to test if speed affects how wet you get in the rain. The variables will include your speed, your size, the rate of rainfall, and the amount of water that hits you. Your hypothesis states that one variable, speed, causes a change in another variable, the amount of water that hits you. The speed with which you walk or run is the manipulated variable or the variable that causes a change in another. The amount of water that you accumulate is the responding variable or the variable that changes in response to the manipulated variable. To examine the relationship between manipulated variable and a responding variable, scientists use controlled experiment. Controlled experiment is only one variable the manipulated variable is deliberately changed at a time. While the responding variable is observed for changes, all other variables are kept constant or controlled. Next, we have drawing conclusions. The scientist's rainy day experiment produced some convincing data. The clothes of the walking scientist accumulated 217 grams of water, while the clothes of the running scientist accumulated 130 grams of water. Based on their data, the scientists concluded that running in the rain keeps you drier than walking, about 40% drier, in fact. Now you have scientific evidence to support the hypothesis stated earlier. What happens if the data do not support the hypothesis? In such a case, a scientist can revise the hypothesis or propose a new one based on the data from the experiment. A new experiment must then be designed to test the revised or new hypothesis. Next, we have developing a theory. Once a hypothesis has been supported in repeated experiment, scientists can begin to develop a theory. A scientific theory is a well-tested explanation for a set of observations or experimental results. For example, according to the kinetic theory of matter, all particles of matter are in constant motion. Kinetic theory explains a wide range of observations such as ice melting or the pressure of a gas. 
Theories are never proved. Instead, they become stronger if the facts continue to support them. However, if an existing theory fails to explain new facts and discoveries, the theory may be revised or a new theory may be replaced. After repeated observations or experiments, scientists may arrive at a scientific law. A scientific law is a statement that summarizes a pattern found in nature. For example, Newton's law of gravity describes how two objects attract each other by means of a gravitational force. This law has been verified over and over. However, scientists have yet to agree on a theory that explains how gravity works. A scientific law describes an observed pattern in nature without attempting to explain it. The explanation of such a pattern is provided by a scientific theory.